Okay, everyone, let's continue looking at Module 26202-23, Motor Theories and Application, in the NCCR 11th edition. This is Section 2.00, AC Motor Operation. AC Motor Operation. There are two major types of AC motors, single-phase motors and polyphase motors. There are two classes of polyphase motors, induction and synchronous. AC motors have two primary parts, the stator and the rotor. Both induction and synchronous motors operate on the principle of a rotating magnetic field. The stator windings can be connected to a three-phase AC input to create a rotating magnetic field. The magnetic field in the rotor is alternatively attracted and repelled by the stator field. Because the rotor is free to turn, it follows the rotating magnetic field in the stator. The magnetic field of the stator influences the rotor. The speed of the revolving flux of the stator represents the synchronous speed. The synchronous speed of a motor is determined by this equation. Current flowing through a conductor sets up a magnetic field around the length of the conductor. A conductor in a magnetic field will produce a current when the magnetic lines of flux cut across the conductor. There is no physical connection between the magnetic field and the conductor. The torque on an induction motor's rotor tends to turn the rotor in the same direction as the rotating field. As the rotor accelerates, the magnitude of the induced voltage in the rotor decreases. It is impossible for an induction motor to operate at synchronous speed. The difference between the synchronous speed and the rotor speed is slip. Slip can be expressed mathematically with this equation. Slip is necessary to permit motor action. The moment a three-phase induction motor is energized, the current supplied to the motor stator terminals may be up to six times the motor full load current. Motor current protection must allow as much as 300% of full load current to allow the motor to start and come to speed. At the instant the motor is energized, the rotor current lags the rotor EMF by a large angle. As rotor speed increases, rotor frequency and reactance decrease causing torque to increase to a maximum, then decrease to the value needed to carry the load. If a load is placed on the shaft, the rotor slows down and more flux lines are cut until enough torque is developed to overcome the load. The motor will run at a lower, slower speed than before a load was placed on the shaft. Rated slip occurs at the point that 100% rated load is applied. Torque climbs as load increases. Once pull-out torque is reached, torque decreases and the motor will quickly stall. An overload condition occurs when the motor reaches a point where it cannot continue to increase its torque. The power factor at no load speed is low because the magnetizing component of input current is a large part of the total input current. Power factor is also a poor at load condition. At full load conditions, in-phase current has increased and magnetizing current remains the same, so the power factor increases. Reversing rotation. The rotation of a three-phase induction motor can be easily reversed by reversing the connection of any two leads. The driving torque is caused by the reaction of a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. Rotor currents are supplied by electromagnetic induction. Stator windings are supplied with three-phase power and produce a rotating magnetic field. This type of motor has a stator and a symmetrical winding. Squirrel cage induction motor. This is the most common rotor designed for three-phase motors. Squirrel cage induction motors consist of a stator, a rotor, and two end shields. Speed depends on the frequency of the applied voltage and the number of poles. It is a general purpose motor which can be exposed to flammable dust or gas. Wound rotor induction motor. A wound rotor induction motor has a winding similar to a three-phase stator winding. Slip rings and brushes are used to form an electromechanical connection to the rotor. This motor is often used as a Y connection resistor which helps the motor produce a higher starting torque. The insertion of resistance limits the starting current surge, produces a high starting torque, and allows speed adjustment. When operated below full speed, slip increases and the motor operates at reduced efficiency and horsepower. If all resistance is removed from the rotor circuit, current and motor speed increase. The motor is used, this motor is used when it is necessary to vary the rotor resistance, limit starting current, or vary motor speed. Some advantages include smooth acceleration under heavy load, no excessive heating during starting, 
and adjustable speed control. Initial costs and maintenance are higher than squirrel cage rotor motor. This motor is a three-phase motor capable of operating without slip. They are used in precision applications, that's synchronous motors. Their operating characteristics, the synchronous motor has a revolving field energized by a source separate from the stator winding. The DC magnetic field on the rotor locks in with the stator's rotating magnetic field and causes the rotor to revolve at synchronous speed. Synchronous motors can change power factors. Synchronous motor construction is essentially the same as three-phase generator construction. This type of motor cannot be started by applying AC to the stator. To allow these motors to start, a squirrel cage winding called an amortisor winding is added. The number of field poles must equal the number of stator poles. When a synchronous motor is started, current is first applied to the stator winding and the motor starts as an induction motor. At near synchronous speed, 5 to 10 percent slip, the field is excited and the motor is able to reach synchronous speed. When the load changes frequently, the motor speed is not steady and the motor sore winding develops torque that dampens or stabilizes the oscillating torque angle. Rotor field excitation. The rotor must be excited from an external DC source. A DC field strength, as DC field strength increases, power factor improves up to the point of near unity. By increasing the rotor field strength further, the power factor decreases in the leading direction and the motor becomes overexcited. If the rotor DC field windings are open when the stator is energized, a high AC voltage will be induced. A resistor of low resistance must be connected across the rotor DC field winding during the starting period. When a synchronous motor loses synchronism with its system, it is said to be out of step. Common cause for loss of synchronism are a fault on the power supply system or under excitation on the rotor. Because the motor winding is designed for starting only, it will overheat if the motor does not reach synchronous speed within its normal time interval. Protection against losing synchronism can be provided by polarized field frequency relays, out-of-step relays, and various digital methods. Synchronous motor torque angle. When a motor is brought to high speed, it will lock onto the rotating magnetic field and develop running torque. When running, the two rotating fields will line up perfectly, but the rotor pole will lag behind the stator pole by an angle known as the torque angle. Torque angle will increase as the load increases by up to about 90 degrees and maximum torque is developed. If the load increases past the point of maximum torque, the rotor will slip a pole or the motor will lose synchronism and stall or suffer from thermal damage. Synchronous motors should not be used when there are violent fluctuations in torque. Single phase induction motors. These motors cannot do the same work as three phase motors without larger conductors to carry the current. These motors are very common. The stator does not rotate but alternates polarity between poles. The interaction between the rotor and stator fields will not produce rotation. The rotor rotation must be started by an outside force. The stator is made of slotted laminations with an auxiliary starting and running winding. The windings have different electrical characteristics and the motor reaches 75% synchronous speed, the starting winding is disconnected. A thermal relay is used to guard against the windings burning up. On capacitor type induction motor, this motor is a modified form of a split phase motor. The capacitor start motor has a capacitor placed in series with the auxiliary windings. The capacitor gives the motor a starting torque of about four times its rated torque. To reverse rotation, the connection of either winding can be reversed. The capacitor run motor allows the auxiliary winding to remain energized after startup. Start capacitors cannot be used as run capacitors. The capacitor start capacitor run or CSCR motor combines the useful features of both motors by using two different capacitors. Shaded pole induction motor. This motor has a salient pole stator and a cage rotor. A portion of each pole is split and has a short circuited copper strap called a shading coil. The four coils in the main winding are connected in series across the motor terminals. The shaded pole motor has similar operating characteristics to the split phase motor. When the main pole flux is increasing, the greater portion of the flux rises in the portion of the pole not in the vicinity of the shading coil. At its maximum value, the flux is more evenly distributed. Overall, the main flux rises first in the unshaded portion of the pole and later in the shaded portion. Single phase synchronous motor. This motor runs at synchronous speed. It's also useful when constant speed is needed. 
multiple speed induction motor. This motor speed depends on power supply frequency and the number of poles used. There are two types in common use, the multiple winding motor and the consequent pole motor. Consequent pole motor characteristics depend on the intended application. And here's some trade terms you should read over and become familiar with for this section. And some review questions for this section. If a motor has four poles and is operating at a frequency of 60 hertz, the synchronous speed is, and remember this calculation is in your book, and we will do them in the class, 1800 RPM. The type of motor most likely to be used in a location where flammable dust and torque fluctuations is a single phase induction motor, a wound rotor induction motor, a squirrel cage induction motor, or synchronous motor. I'll say squirrel cage induction motor. A type of motor used in precision applications that requires constant speed with zero slip is a single phase induction motor, a wound rotor induction motor, a squirrel cage induction motor, or a synchronous motor. And I'm going to say a synchronous motor. A heating system is most likely to use a single phase induction motor, a wound rotor induction motor, a squirrel cage induction motor, or a synchronous motor. I'll say single phase induction motor. All right, everyone, that's it for that section. Next section will be 3.00, variable speed drives, and I will see you over there.